Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here again. In today's video, I am going to be trying to fix a Nintendo Switch that I picked up for £24. Now, £24 sounds like a bloody bargain, and that's because it is. Um, Nintendo Switches often go for upwards of £100 still, and tablet only around about £70 to £80. So, um, pretty good. I was quite excited to get this thing down. I should note that I initially paid um, £29 and £5 shipping, but I got £10 partially refunded to me. So here is a photo of the listing. Um, as you can see, it says £1. That's actually because it was a starting bid. Uh, it had bids and best offer available. £5 postage. Uh, it says Nintendo Switch, 32 gigabytes, black console, tablet only, console faulty. Um, and then if you have a look in the description, it says Nintendo Switch, 32 gigabyte, black console, tablet only, console faulty. Um, no power, no returns, no Joy-Cons, just tablet. So I sent him a message asking a bit more detail about the Switch. How long had he had it for? When did it stop breaking? Did he buy it used? Had it been opened? Had it been near water? All those sorts of questions. And he came back and said, Hi mate, console is like on description. So no Joy-Cons or any accessories, just tablet. I'm by that two years ago for my daughter. She was used about year after that just lost interest and console was not charged in about year probably battery is gone but i'm don't know because kids never said all so it can be anything thanks for buying well thanks for selling so i got quite excited thinking you know this thing's probably just got a discharged battery i was looking at new replacement batteries i was really really excited i bought a new shell for it and you'll have to wait for another video for that and well, it came down and I took it apart to try and see if I can put the battery from my working switch in this one. Now, you might be saying, Elliot, why don't you just start recording and show us the whole process? I am sorry, I got a little bit excited and ahead of myself um, and I needed to see if I needed a new battery or not so I could order that for the video. So it came down, I took it apart, I plugged the battery in, nothing happened. And as I took it apart, I noticed a couple of things that were off, which weren't mentioned in the description. Let's just actually show my um, sort of experience, trying to clean it up and trying to get it working. Um, we still don't know the results yet, but just stay tuned, watch this, enjoy. So I've never actually taken apart a Nintendo Switch prior to this. Um, obviously, I have actually taken this apart already, as I mentioned. Um, I wasn't too sure if I was going to need additional parts, like a battery, and I just got quite excited and decided to take it apart. It's in pretty good condition. It's definitely not um, excellent. You know, there's no real big marks at the back. It's a little bit dirty from the fingerprints. Um, it didn't come with any Joy-Cons, it didn't come with an SD card or a game in the top. Uh, there's a few problems um, though which are sort of alarm bells. As I said, I have taken this apart so there's going to be some aspect of this which will be my fault but the screws had been slightly um, sort of tried to be undone. You can see from the uh, screws there which are meant to be black that there's a little bit of silver showing which is obviously where someone has tried to undo this thing. Um, but the bigger problem then lies when we open it up. So after you've removed all of the screws, you should be able to just lift this off. It might need to just be sort of prized um, apart from either side, uh, but then we can just set that to the back. Now, when I first opened this thing, I sort of thought, ah, this is pretty good. Uh, if you have a look on the back, it's quite dusty from where the vent is here. So I was quite hopeful, you know, to be honest, about the, uh, the whole dust. That probably means that it's never been taken apart. Um, and then just to give me a bit more reassurance, I saw some dust on this black uh, sticker here, which has just been placed to um you know so that you don't see the silver through this stuff it's just a bit of black electrical tape uh, but you know seeing all of this stuff i was quite relieved to think okay this hasn't actually been uh tampered with or taken apart um but obviously i was wrong it it's definitely someone who sort of knows um somewhat what they're doing because obviously they've done this in such a way that it makes it look like it's never been taken apart um so it is super super fishy Once you have removed all of those screws, you need to just lift up on this uh, little micro SD card reader and that will pop right off. When I first opened this thing, it was just like sat there. So it hadn't even been uh, pressed back down again, which is um, another indicator that this thing had been tampered with. So uh, then you can remove this. 
Now, again, I had a little bit of hope around this point because you know there's dust on the inside of this. Um, the uh, this hasn't been replaced. This is the official uh, thermal paste, um, and then there's also dust around the um, sort of square sponge parts just to sort of hold this thing together. So you know, I was really thinking, okay, this is actually quite good, but obviously then. Um, I started to see the other problems and then it sort of answered my questions as to why they were still dusty because someone's opened this, saw, seen the condition that this was in, um, tried to fix it, uh, which I'm going to show you in a minute, and then they just didn't bother to clean it obviously because it still didn't work. But um, I'll take some zoomed in shots in a second, but you can immediately see, you know, there's a problem here. What is all of that scratching and why is it green? Okay, so here we go. We've got the uh, macro zoom in on and it's probably not going to be very high quality, but hopefully it will still be clear enough so you can see this. Um, so around this um, capacitor or whatever this is here, I'm not going to be super clued up on this. Uh, you can see a bunch of scratching. Um, it's actually so scratched that some of these traces have probably been uh, ripped up. You can also see some pink there, which is an indicator that this has actually seen some water damage. Um, and also on the pins on the back of the charging slot, let's see if we can get some focusing on here, um, there's also corrosion. So uh, also around here um, on these little resistors, uh, there's not a lot on the battery. And in fact, I can confirm that this battery works because I plugged it into my good switch and I've charged it up to 30%. So that's quite good. Um, down here, you can see there is some more corrosion. Uh, and if we come over here, there's some more here as well. All of these ribbon cables are probably going to be uh, corroded. In fact, we can probably just lift this one up and check. Yeah, there is. So um, these little gold teeth sort of plates are what connect to the board. So whatever this is, is definitely not making a connection. Um, again, I'm not too clued up on what this is. Could be the touchscreen uh, for the um, digitizer. We've got some more corrosion over here. Uh, there's actually a little bit of rust there. There's some more corrosion underneath there as well. So instead of uh, doing what any normal person would do, which is just putting a bit of isopropyl alcohol on the area which is being corroded, it looks like this person has actually scratched um, around this area um, in the hopes of maybe trying to remove some of this corrosion. But obviously in the process of that, they've scratched some of these traces. But just from looking at that, it doesn't look like we've gotten any of the traces. Maybe here, right there, um, it could be. Let's have a look a bit closer up. Yeah, maybe there that trace could be gone, but we can check that uh, with some continuity in a moment. Uh, but what I want to do, you can see how quickly isopropyl evaporates. Uh, I want to just sort of douse this entire area in isopropyl alcohol. Uh, we should probably unplug this ribbon cable here. You can see on the underside of that ribbon cable, that's actually all right there, but uh, let's just get a little bit more isopropyl in this area. And then what we're gonna do is take our toothbrush and scrub it. I just realized in doing that, I totally should have unplugged this bloody battery. I probably made matters worse for myself. I could have just blown a fuse there. God, well, I mean, the chances of this thing working at this point is pretty bloody slim. It will be a miracle if I do get it to work. So uh, let's put some more isopropyl up here as well. Really just douse the whole area in it. And again, scrub that. I mean, you want to scrub it hard, but at the same time, all of these tiny little surface mount components could come off. So just be a bit gentle. So I removed the cover from the CPU um, because there's a little bit of like corrosion around the outside. Um, the cover on the inside has a little bit of corrosion too. So I'm gonna clean all of this up. Uh, and then also whilst we have this top off, I'm going to clean up the corrosion around here. Oh my goodness me. Ah, this is not looking good. So 
So I think I may have found the source of the problem. This is the cartridge slot that I've just removed from the, um, the top of the switch. And if we have a look down there, it doesn't actually look too bad inside, but around the outside, there's all of this stuff, which to be honest, looks like milk. Um, and then there's corrosion on the pins around the back. So I'd be very surprised if this actually worked. Um, and if I did get this switch working, I'd have to replace this, um, this entire unit piece here. It's even got a chip on it. So I'm not actually sure what this is for, but um, I'm going to sort of neutralize this area and let's just see if we can actually clean any of it off. Uh, because this is quite nasty stuff here. Um, I think it's on the plastic, which is quite worrying. I don't really know how, how this has happened. Yeah, so I definitely think the, uh, the source of the problem has come from this uh, top cartridge slot area. Um, but let's go ahead and put this back down again. And uh, again, if we, if in the unlikely event that we can get this work in, I shall replace this. So yeah, that happened. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it to work. Uh, I've now got a very sort of nice, I mean, it's in pretty good condition switch. Uh, we don't know yet if the screen actually works or the speaker, um, but it is obviously not gonna work. I know that the battery works, but I basically just paid 25 pounds for a battery, which is just the going rate of a switch battery, and I don't need a battery for my switch. So. Um, very upset about that. I did take it apart completely. I cleaned it so much. I uh, actually ended up taking the motherboard out entirely, turning it around and it was just covered in corrosion all over the place. Um, I then soaked it in some isopropyl alcohol on a plate for about half an hour, um, gave it one last scrub with the toothbrush and I still couldn't get it to work. I then went over the capacitors around the chips on the board to see if any of them were shorted out and a few of them were. It's definitely beyond my level of expertise to replace these chips, um, but if you would like to see that, I'll get a hot air gun thing, a soldering gun, uh, buy these chips, give it a go. Um, worst case scenario, I'm just gonna end up buying something that potentially I'll still use anyway, being the hot air gun, and um, I won't have a working switch, but I don't have one working at the moment anyway. So if this video gets a thousand likes, I'll give that a go, and uh, we'll see where we get from that. So. Unfortunately, we haven't got a working switch yet. Obviously, you know, I've got a few um, components and a little box of screws and a faulty switch, but yeah, it's just a big shame. Uh, one last try to turn it on in a bit of luck that it might work on the video. Here we go. Oh my goodness me, would you look at that? Absolutely nothing. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please let me know. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I'm sorry I wasn't able to get this one working. Um, I didn't want to waste the footage because I thought it was quite fun anyway. And it's new for me and it'll be new for you, for, I'm sure, for some of you. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more, let me know. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.